Olá e sejam muito bem-vindos, eu sou o Aki. Galera, bem-vindos a mais um episódio aqui analisando os Dev Diaries que, de Victoria 3 que a Paradox tem postado uh, lá no YouTube deles. Uh, lembrando que aqui o que, que eu quero promover é justamente dar uma olhada no que, que eles estão contando pra gente nas mecânicas, fazer prospecções do que, que pode ser o futuro, né? Fazer ali... Uh, tentar induzir, tentar pensar no que, que o, o, o Victoria 3 pode apresentar para a gente, também tentar entender várias das mecânicas que eles estão colocando aqui uh, para a gente, certo? Uh, lembrando, para quem gosta do meu conteúdo, por favor, desce aqui, deixa aquele like, se você é novo no canal, seja muito bem-vindo, considere se inscrever e ativar o sininho, porque tem muito conteúdo uh, diariamente aqui para vocês, tá bom, galera? Então, vamos para esse vídeo aqui que foi lançado em agosto, é o segundo uh, update que eles fizeram do Victoria 3. E aqui, galera, eles vão trazer alguns assuntos que eu confesso que eu não entendi direito, que são assuntos sobre grupos, assuntos sobre a população em si. Enfim, vamos dar uma olhada aqui. Welcome to another monthly update video for Victoria 3. My why? Why, jogo? Para, why? Para de me trollar, pô. Peggy 12. Ah! My name is Sama and I'm part of the community team for Victoria. And this month we're going to focus on politics. First out, interest groups. Ah, grupos de interesse. Agora faz sentido. Agora faz sentido. An interest group is a group of pops that have a common interest. Uh, pretty straightforward with the name. Uh, it's any collection of people coming together and sharing the same sort of agenda that they want to push. A pop can be part of, in fact, multiple interest groups. They're, they're just, um, they're attracted to whatever is in line with their wealth, whatever their work is, whatever any sort of facet of their identity is. And again, it could be multiple things at once. You could be a laborer who's both because they're a laborer interested in trade unions and also someone who's very religious and is therefore attracted to the devout at the same time. Or you could just be politically apathetic. Everything has burned you out. You're politically inactive. You can be in an interest group or inactive. The interest groups are entirely about domestic politics. They're not Uh, people in other countries, they're your own pops, your own population that you are trying to contend with, balance, possibly paint the map within your own country. Uh, spreading a specific interest group, trying to see how far you can expand the political pull of just one group of people, or two or three, or however many you want. Galera, é importante lembrar o seguinte, né? Em Victoria 2, você não consegue passar uma decisão, várias decisões, elas são... Ah, você precisa do apoio popular, né? E, e ter apoio popular é justamente ter um grupo de pessoas, igual ele está falando aí, que apoia aquela sua ah, decisão política, né? Ah, existem várias, várias e várias coisas lá no Victoria 2 que você não consegue passar sem esse apoio popular. Pops contribuem to an interest group's political strength in a bunch of different ways, with a bunch of different factors. Their wealth, their, their professions, the status that the state itself grants them are all major contributing factors. A uh, nobleman in a monarchy probably has a lot more political power than a peasant who works on a little subsistence farm. The trade union interest group is always going to have certain opinions on things, but it can change over time as different ideologies come to the forefront in a country. Uh, tipo perhaps in the beginning que você they're faz dentro, just purely interested in material gains, but soon ideology takes hold and The trade unions now suddenly have uh, more opinions about the share of political power in the country. It can be as simple as just a change in leadership at the top. A new guy comes to power and he's got an idea. And that changes uh, what the interest group is going after, at least as long as that guy's there. There are certain social innovations which will come uh, throughout the game, which will change what interest groups find more important over time. They may cause more uh, leaders to show up who have certain opinions on things in certain directions as well. Some interest groups will be larger than others. Uh, if you have a very agricultural country, people who work on farms are going to be a major part of the population, and therefore they're going to have huge uh, 
political sway in that country, big clout. And uh, if you don't do anything that those people like to see happen, their approval of you is going to fall down. Likewise, at the same time, if you play to the biggest interest groups in your country and you try to do things that they personally like, their approval is going to increase significantly and you get to enjoy a bit of stability from that. If uh, interest group's approval of you is high and they are an interest group with high clout, then maybe you get to enjoy some certain bonuses. If the industrialists really like you, they'll make sure that the factories are working properly. Or if the yeah. industrialists don't like you at all, maybe there's some issues with the assembly line today. Who knows? <laughs> Boa. Uh, essa mecânica, ela já existe no Victoria 2, né? Isso aqui, uh, eles não estão colocando nada demais. Talvez os bônus, né? Os bônus de felicidade e tal. Eu confesso que eu não me lembro se já tem no Victoria 2. Se alguém se lembrar, pode colocar aí no, no chat, galera. Uh, mas, assim, né? É o básico e funciona muito bem no Victoria. E sim, você tem que estar tá, uh, de olho no que, que a sua população está pedindo para você conseguir manipular uh, os acontecimentos dentro da nação, né? Por exemplo, se você quer mudar de ideologia, se você quer mudar... Uh, o seu tipo de governo, coisas desse tipo, você tem que fazer as corretas influências para justamente fazer esses grupos de pessoas surgirem, para você ir começar apoiando esses grupos de, de pessoas e finalmente, sei lá, faz, dar um golpe de Estado, coisas desse tipo, né? Interest groups hold a lot of sway over which laws are passed. But what are laws more concretely? Laws are the collection of rules that your country runs by. They are the political framework of your country. They are the economic framework of your country. They are how you define what rights every citizen has. Those are what laws are in Victoria III. The three major categories of laws are constitutional laws about the, basically the way that society, the power is ranged in society. Uh, there are economic laws and there are human rights laws. Now, the way that laws fit into these mudou, categories né? is a little bit loose, but it generally conforms to these three. Countries start in very different positions with these laws in 1836. And some of them have, there are monarchies, there are republics, there are countries with slavery, there are countries with different economic policies ranging from free trade to mercantilism. Uh, and uh, these laws determine kind of your start, the starting point for your country. And changing them can, be, in some cases, be quite difficult, especially if there are interest groups in power already that have a vested interest in keeping those laws around. So uh, your starting laws can matter quite a bit from where you're going. I mean, the basic setup of all countries is in line with how those countries operated in 1836. There were a lot of monarchies in 1836. So mm -hmm. many countries that perhaps nowadays are republics even, start off with a crowned head and very few people able to vote, if anybody can vote at all. But uh, gradually over time, those laws can change. You enact law through a couple of means. The first thing is to make sure you have Same interest percentage. groups that want those laws. If you have nobody in your country who is at all interested in seeing a certain law passed, the chances you, of you being able to enact anything related to that are very slim. But if, if you have an interest group in power that wants a law to pass, you're going to have a good time. You can also have certain events that sometimes encourage you to pursue a certain uh, law change, and you can have uh, even interest groups outside of government start to apply a little bit of pressure and encourage you to consider certain reasonable laws. Your sense of change laws can come from your own agenda as a player and what you want to achieve, what you want to do with the country during your playthrough. Uh, but of course your interest groups and your pops will also have opinions about what they want uh, and you need to make sure that you align them so that you can achieve your own agenda. Uh, and in some cases you might see their agenda pushed through or might need to appease them a little bit to make sure that you can get what you want out of it. The laws that interest groups are uh, attracted to is tied pretty closely to their ideology. Uh, exactly. Uh, the landowners are shockingly going to be very interested in things that preserve their property and their status, whereas uh, interest group built out of the lower classes, like a trade union or the rural folk, will be more interested in having laws that perhaps give them power for once. 
Laws are the things in Victoria 3 that determine what kind of country you are running. Uh, is it a monarchy? Is it a republic? Is it a slave state? Uh, is it a state with a strong welfare system, or with a militarized police force, with a... any of these things are derived from your laws. Another important part of your society. O que me chama bastante atenção, porque como eu disse para vocês, você vai manipular na cadeia de eventos para criar esses grupos de interesse para então você conseguir fazer basicamente o que você quer. Por exemplo, uh, não, de, dependendo da jogatina que você está fazendo em Victoria 2, é muito difícil você mudar o seu tipo de governo. Uh, ou então, sei lá, se tornar socialista ou coisas desse tipo. Uh, até onde eu me lembro, tem algumas nações que até mesmo é difícil você tirar a escravidão. Enfim, detalhes desse tipo que são complicados. Mas uma coisa que eu me lembro, uh, para criar esses grupos de interesse, né? Eu me lembro que conforme as pessoas vão se alfabetizando e coisas desse tipo... Ah, você vai aumentando o seu Pluto Crazy, que eles chamam lá em Victoria 2, e conforme você vai aumentando o seu Pluto Crazy, mais as pessoas exigem direitos humanos, por exemplo. Né? Ah, vamos ver como que eles vão implementar essas coisas aqui. Né? Ah, no Victoria 2, por exemplo, quando você queria alinhar as pessoas com determinada ideologia política, ah, é, principalmente no ano de eleição, no ano próximo de eleição, Sempre existiam os eventos que você transformava parte da, de um determinado grupo social, né? parte de um determinado grupo de trabalhadores, coisas desse tipo, uh, mais inclinado para um lado de ideológico. Né? Uh, você não conseguiria mudar tudo em um ano, mas conforme a jogatina ia passando, você poderia, por exemplo, tornar o seu país socialista. Né? E se você não fosse socialista de verdade, não atendesse as demandas dele, acabava tendo guerra civil, coisas desse tipo. Vamos ver, é, isso aqui é intrigante. Vamos ver como é que eles vão implementar isso dentro do jogo. Our institutions. Let's learn a bit more about what they are and how they function. Instituições, vamos Institutions ver. are systems of government that you build up over a longer period of time. So they can be things like the police force, the school system, the healthcare system. Uh, even things like conscription and colonial offices that manage your colonies. So both domestic and uh, international efforts of your country. But the key thing is that they are built over time, gradually. Uh, and laws can change exactly how these work. So, for example, giving the church power over the schools or the hospitals, uh, you might be getting a better deal out of how much government bureaucracy you need to spend on getting those running, but you also strengthen the power of the church. Similarly, if you send in the military and police matters, uh, that might be an effective way to suppress some dissent, but you also strengthen the power of the military. So this all ties back to the interest groups and their own power base and how they can enact their will on the country. So institutions are built over time, and they're built, in a sense, not completely independently of laws, but an institution can be quite robust and then change depending on what you do with the law. So, for example, uh, education can be handled by the church, which it often is in many states in the early portion of the game, but if you then move to a more secular form of education, the power of the church will diminish, but perhaps some of your administrative costs in running this education system will increase. And then you need to make sure that you actually have the governmental system to back that up before you start making, implementing those changes. To expand an institution, you need enough bureaucracy to run the next level of it you want to expand to. So you need to build up your bureaucratic machine, essentially your government administration, uh, and make it more advanced in order to get, keep all these institutions functioning. And if you end up losing some of that administration, you might have trouble getting the institutions to run properly, you might have to scale them back again. And that is the big difference between institutions and laws, that institutions are built over time and they have costs to maintain. To establish an institution, you first need to have the bureaucratic machinery, the government, government administration, uh, to actually support it and keep it running. Uh, so once you have that, you can start building it, uh, but you will also need to pass the appropriate laws to indicate what kind of institution you're building. Your, your institutions can both help and control your populations in various ways. So some of them, like the education and the healthcare, will mainly they will improve the literacy and the health of your population. But there are also institutions like the secret police, which help you kind of control dissent and things like 
interest groups uh, starting to foment revolution. So uh, depending on what kind of country you want to run, these might be upsides and downsides. Maybe you don't want your population to be literate. Maybe you don't want them to be healthy. And of course, there comes a cost with running all these institutions as well. And that is... Galera, legal, né? Porque isso aqui é uma mecânica nova. Não existe instituições ou nada próximo de instituições dentro do Victoria 2. Então, vamos ver como é que vai ser. E achei legal porque elas também, assim como os grupos de interesse, vão influenciar bastante as decisões que você consegue ou não fazer dentro da sua nação, né? Bem legal esse esquema de instituições, dá, dá um certo hype para poder jogar e ver como é que vai funcionar. Sei lá, será que a gente consegue uh, fortalecer tanto a instituição exército, a instituição militar no país que você sofre um golpe militar? Será que existe isso? Eu confesso que né, fico intrigado, vamos ver como que vai ser. E galera, se você está me acompanhando no YouTube, muito obrigado por ter me assistido até aqui. Considere se inscrever, deixa aquele like e deixa os seus comentários aqui também, que vai ser um prazer poder discutir o que, que a gente pode tirar desse Dev Diary aqui. Aquele abraço do Aki, até mais. Tchau, tchau.